that we are a team, the registered dietitians and the, the dietetic technicians registered are a team. And we, we really do need to work together and appreciate one another. And I think sometimes the diet technicians haven't felt as appreciated and that's on us. Welcome to NDTR Spotlight, the corner of the internet where NDTR shine. I'm your host, Maria Lorraine, and today I'm super excited. If you have not been living under a rock, you've probably seen that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recently announced that there's going to be a national NDTR day, the second Thursday of every every March. And so that was just so exciting, and I was thrilled with that. If you were on Instagram or social media during the time, you saw a lot of NDTRs posting exciting about excited about the news. And I was excited, but I was also skeptical. I've been in NDTR since 2017, and I've seen Diet Tech Central putting out days for NDTRs, um, but I haven't seen much from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So I was a little skeptical, and I wanted to know more. I wanted to know why this day was made. Is this just a one-time thing? What was the, what's, the, what's the purpose? Is there any behind the scene motives? And so I reached out the, to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and they were so gracious to connect me with Lori Wright, who is a spokesperson person for the Academy. And she is here today to share and answer the questions I have, and maybe you have as well, about the creation of this day and what we can expect as NDTRs from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So Lori, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's honestly an honor. And I really am appreciative of the Academy setting up this, this time for us to chat to the NDTR audience. So as I was saying, traditionally or in the past, Diet Tech Central, a platform that kind of um, puts out content for diet techs, was creating in DTR days specifically for us. But now the Academy is doing it. So I'm curious, what was that, that factor that kind of pushed the Academy over the edge to finally give us a day in National Nutrition Month? I think if I might just go back to a history but I don't think we as nutrition professionals have, have done it right until more recently. We had National Nutrition Month, right? And then at National Nutrition Month, we were always doing the work. We were advertising nutrition, doing you know little talks and cooking demonstrations, but we weren't ever recognizing ourselves. You know, National Nurses Week and National Social Work Month, they were always we recognized we instead were working. So a few years ago, they started the uh, the registered dietitian day, and I think it was just then an awareness that maybe we were lumping nutrition professionals together, but yet it was called dietitian day, and we kind of realized, oh, that 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 really the NDTR is a separate profession professional under this nutrition umbrella, and we need to recognize them too. So it was just kind of a, oh, we, we need to, to recognize them in their own right for all the good that they do for, for patients and, and healthcare. That's, that's refreshing to hear because it sounds like there's growth and there's movement in the academy and they're not staying stuck in their ways. And so very exciting. And that kind of makes sense. I'm like, okay, now it's time to recognize the NDTRs as well and see that they are different and not lump them together. Cause you are right. They always said registered dietitian day and then NDTR was kind of like down below. <laughs> so it's very, yeah. we're very excited to have our own, our own day now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I think, um, I think we, uh, as I think as an Academy are really making strides to be more, uh, to have more, cultural awareness. And I believe that that's part of our culture as a nutrition professional, that, um, you know, that we are a team, the registered dietitians and the, the dietetic technicians registered are a team. And we, we really do need to work together and appreciate one another. And I think sometimes the diet technicians haven't felt as appreciated and that's on us. And um, this is one step to, um, you know, to be more enlightened, as you said, and, and really to recognize how important they are as a nutrition profession. Very well said that it's like a, they're here to help. And um, I guess the answer to this question was already said, but I'd love to hear how you have a spin on it or how you explain it. But can we expect the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics to continue this progressive way of thinking about the NDTR credential and doing more and supporting NDTRs? 
I, you know, I've always felt bad. I felt like in so many of the nutrition education task forces, um, the NDTR has felt like that there was a almost a direct attack on them and in, in, in the two previous nutrition education task forces. And um, those were years ago, but the damage they did um, really cost us some, some programs um, because people felt unsupported. And um, I really do feel that the academy has gone through some enlightening. You know, it wasn't that the academy made those recommendations. In fact, that they were, um, they, you know, we did not want to, to eliminate the NDTR. Um, but I think it just left a bad taste and, and felt like, um, I think it felt like you know, maybe they felt like they were second class citizens and they by no means are not. And I feel like the Academy is recognizing that and really trying to make steps forward. I know even in the recent campaign that um, for, um, for different positions in the Academy, there was a real emphasis on it, making sure that we include the NDTR as, as part of our profession and what important nutrition professionals they are. Uh, that's that sounds great. I did want to ask, what is the nutrition task force? You mentioned that, and I'm not sure if my audience would know what that is. I'm sorry. The, uh, so many years ago, there's been two iterations that are looking at, you know, where we should be as a profession. And it was, uh, you know, one of the first ones was in the 70s. I wasn't registered then, <laughs> um, but. But you know, some of the recommend, early recommendations were we needed to move to a master's degree. And then there was another one, um, I think it was over 10 years ago, that again said that the dietitians should move to the master's degree. And then it's like, well, then what happens to the NDTR? Do, should they um, go to the, um, the bachelor's degree or stay as an AA? So, um, you know, it, it but it, it, I think it smarted. Um, both times it made the NDTR feel like they were being eliminated. And that wasn't the intent of either of those task forces. But, you know, that's what people heard. And we, and we have to be, you know, we have to hear that and, and, and right the wrongs that maybe they felt. Yeah. And I definitely think the Academy is doing that. They're writing the wrongs. I mean, with the national nutrition month and the day for NDTRs, and even I saw an email following up maybe a week later talking about the dietitian and DTR credential, the relationship there. And then you just mentioned, and this kind of goes into my next question I have for you, um, the leadership positions in the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Traditionally, it's usually you just see dietitians. It's very hard to find a DTR um, with a leadership position. So is the Academy, what is the Academy doing for that and what are the benefits for a DTR and an NDTR to be involved in the academy? There are so many benefits um, for academy membership, and and remember that the the academy is a membership organization. So they aren't a they; they are an us. It's us um, working together for our profession, and as a, an academy, uh, many of the the task forces, the leadership positions, they are making sure that there is a seat at the table for the NDTR. Um, and so, you know, increasing that representation uh, for NDTRs at, in the various leadership roles within the academy. Also, um, you know, when we look at benefits, you can talk about the benefits of staying up on the latest and greatest. So, having access to the journal and to the nutrition care manual um, so that we are practicing with the latest and greatest. Um, and there are, you know, one thing that people don't even realize is all the work. We have a whole team in Washington, D.C. advocating for dietitians and diet technicians and services reimbursement. And so that, you know, as, as we move forward and, and are looking at reimbursement, that's one area that, that the Academy is working for, for all nutrition professionals and protecting our credentials from unlicensed um, activity. Um, we also look at expanding 
the care that we can give in, in communities. Much of the work right now is around the Medical Nutrition Therapy Act. That's going to open up services to underserved individuals and communities. That you know, that, that's really part of this issue of health disparities. So this is all behind the scenes that the Academy is doing. And then there's those other benefits like the networking. I mean, just, just you see um, from your activity, just that ability to, to link, to connect to one another, to have that network, it's invaluable for, for, for jobs, for um, mentoring opportunities. So there are just so many benefits to, be, to being a member of the Academy. I appreciate you correcting the way I talk about the Academy and saying it is, it's a member, so it's ours. And I, that's, that's a good thing to begin to say. And even for NDTR is to speak that way. And the leadership positions you mentioned, I think I do, I do have to say NDTR is we have been at a fault with that because we're not involved in the Academy um, and we're not applying to those positions that are there. So I hope, I hope that hearing from you a spokesperson for the Academy who clearly is, you know, doing a lot with it um, can just spike that interest and get NDTRs involved because there is space, it sounds like, for us in the Academy and we need to take advantage of that. There's a lot of opportunities that, you know, at, at the affiliate level and your DPGs, if you're a member of the, of the DPGs, um, uh, we need, you know, we're always looking for people to step forward to be a delegate. So to be the voice of the members, either for your affiliate or a DPG, there's so many opportunities um, for, for leadership positions and who better than the NDTR? I I agree with that. And so I, I with the NDTR and talking about this and what the Academy is doing, you mentioned in those, um, what, what were they called? I forgot the nutrition task. The education task yes, forces. The education yeah. task forces that they were talking about the master's degree for the dietitians and and that's come to place. And I, I do agree with that. I think the extra education for registered dietitians is a is a great thing to have because nutrition is very complex. But I I the reason I started this podcast is because getting a master's and that dietetic internship is very hard for a lot of people, mm -hmm. just with prices, just with life circumstances. A lot of people find this career as a second career. And so the NDTR credential to me is just very inclusive and a very easy and accessible way to enter into the world of nutrition and then do it right and not just get a certification. So I wanted to know your opinion. Do you see or have you seen or do you anticipate also being a professor, more NDTRs coming into the field of dietetics? I do think this um, this movement, um, you know, to entry level at the master's degree, I, I anticipate that we might have more of the NDTRs um, because we have two pathways to becoming um, a registered dietetic nutrition and dietetic technician. Um, it can either be through the, you know, the, the two year program. Um, with the 450 hours of supervised practice. I, I actually uh, helped start a program um, some years ago in Tampa. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was such a need. Um, it's such a need in our, in, our, in our community in the state of Florida. Um, so we have those traditional roles and, uh, you know, we've kind of hung steady with the number of programs. Um, we had seen some closed down, but I feel like we're, we're hanging steady with those programs now. Um, but the second pathway that was introduced a, a few years ago was those students that completed a, a DPD program that they could sit for the exam too. And um, so that kind of bumped up more of those, um, those those credentialed or um, registered professionals. And I do think that, you know, with the movement to the masters, as you said, there are some people that are, are gonna say, you know what, I, I don't have the time, the money, maybe the ability to relocate. Um, so I'll, I'm going to use my four year and take the exam and practice as an uh, NDTR. Um, so I, 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 I anticipate, and I always encourage students to do that because you're getting the great experience that, that you need and, and functioning as, a, as a, you know, a really incredible part of, of, the, of the team. So I, I hope to continue to see that 
that can, that can grow. Um, and as we put more spotlight on um, just the identity of the, of the nutrition team, could we start building the, the two-year programs as well? Yes, having focus on that. I didn't even know the two-year programs were an option for people. So it's nice. And there's not that many, but it's nice to see them out there and being able to talk to some NDTRs who have gained their education and got the NDTR through that. It's very rigorous. It's a very rigorous program. It really is. It, it really is. So that we have these diverse pathways that um, can meet pretty much anybody's needs for, you know, um, and that, that, that's important to open up access to the profession. Yes. And I think that's, that's a perfect place to end and a perfect place just to take away that there's access to nutrition. You can get into the field and practice it correctly, not just with a certification and the academy be, being a member of it and, and growing the, growing the profession with professionals for the networking and the experience and the leadership roles is definitely worth it. And the academy now is clearly, clearly, um, speaking up for NDTRs, so. Yep, we're committed, we're committed. And um, we are so excited um, for next March when we celebrate the NDTR in their own day um, as what, how important they are in the team. And I look forward to it. Lori, anything else you'd like to add or leave with the NDTR audience? Well, I just thank you for all that you do for our patients and our community. Um, there's so much need and in increasing the the access to care from a nutrition professional was so important. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in another spotlight. Thank you again, Lori, so much for your time.